Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the webinar today, Improving the Zoning, Land Use, and Development Process with GIS. I am Wayne Childs, Director of Technical Solutions at General Code. Um, I've spent the majority of my career and um, my time at General Code specializing in developing intelligent ways to meet the unique code access needs of planning, building, and zoning professionals, um, along with the ultimate users of the codes. And that's really who we're focusing on. Um, if any of you have been with us for um, the previous few webinars in our series, um, there is a theme that I cover with user-centered zoning. I believe it's really important, and General Code believes it's really important to keep users at the center of everything that um, you do as public officials or uh, developers or planners, and um, users are definitely at the center of what we do as codifiers. Um, in addition to, the, to focusing on those innovative solutions and publishing technology, I'm also a planning board member in my hometown. So planning is something that's really close to me, really important to me, and um, I give back to my community as well. Um, so I'm always looking for new ways to help make a planning and developing development process uh, better for everybody involved. Um, I'm also an active member of the American Planning Association. Um, my colleagues, Jeannie Sanders and Kayla Lindsay will be on the webinar today to assist me in fielding questions and keeping the webinar running smoothly. We have a fair amount of content in today's webinar. Um, so we're gonna reserve time for Q&A session at the end of the webinar. We should have plenty of time for that. Um, so if you can try to hold the questions, if you have something important, of course, um, feel free to raise your hand um, using the um, webinar tools or um, enter a question in the chat. And um, Jeannie and Kayla are gonna be looking at that so they can flag my attention. Um, if I don't see it, I uh, will try to get to that. If you experience any audio or video issues or have a question that uh, can't wait, like I said, please feel free to, to let us know. Um, we're going to have several polls today in the presentation, so please be prepared to participate with the GoToWebinar poll dialog box. Um, it's really important. I like to, I like to see, um, you know how different issues are affecting different attendees at the webinars um, so it's it's uh, really important and i'd love to get your feedback uh, this webinar will be archived when complete and it will be posted on the general code website for future reference or sharing with others in the future if you'd like to pass it along or, or go back and refer to it we will be recording it and posting it on the website so uh, now that all the housekeeping's done if everybody is ready we're going to go ahead and get started in today's webinar thanks I'll start by generally covering at a high level, what is GIS? GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems and is a digital tool that examines spatial relationships, patterns, and trends in geography. Data itself without spatial reference really doesn't provide um, as much value as, as it does when there's a geographic context. Without geographic context, it's hard to keep up with the world that we live in today. Um, GIS technology is really pervasive. We're going to see some examples and talk about that a little more detail later. We are increasingly dependent on GIS in our daily lives. Um, we have an entire current generation of adults um, who have used mobile devices and they've ditched printed pages in favor of their preferred digital devices, phones, tablets, uh, laptop computers, and They've grown up using GIS extensively, whether they know it or not. Um, you know, the pervasiveness of, of Google Maps, um, different GIS tracking technology, um, really feeds a lot of those apps that people are using in their everyday lives, not just professionally, not just in, um, you know, government service or, or commercial business, but, but in their personal lives. So it's really become a tool that, that people are comfortable with and it's become ingrained in the way they do business every day. Uh, a lot of those old jokes about how hard it is to fold up a map when you're done with it will really fall flat with most people under the age of 35 as they've never had to do that in their lives. More and more digital device users expect to be able to find, consume, analyze, and share critical information, forms, applications, and complete processes that they have to do with local government electronically and remotely. 
Um, they are not fond of walking into offices. Um, I know I have a few college age kids myself and um, it's actually quite hard to get them to physically walk into an office and ask for help or even to pick up a phone and make a phone call to a live person. And that's because they grew up with that expectation that they should be able to um, get any piece of information they need uh, digitally on demand. So um, with today's focus, I'm gonna focus more on GIS mapping. So let's get really specific into that. Um, the five main components of any GIS system are geographic data contained in a database. So that's your data. Think of things like uh, parcel data. Um, you know, so that's your street address, your zip code, um, what county you're in, um, lots of different data stored in a database. The second is analysis tools or software. So we have to have software that does something with this data. The third is visualization tools or hardware, the actual um, medium that we're using. So again, uh, desktop computers, laptop computers, cell phones, um, tablets, whatever the tools are that we're using to, um, to look at the products of the analysis tools and the database. Then we also have business rules or methods. Um, this system has to do something useful to solve particular problems that people have, or else it's not worth the rather significant investment in time, effort, and money to put these systems together. Um, GIS is exceptional at solving problems. We'll see quite a few examples later. And the last is people. Um, we have to have users, developers, data collectors, and technicians who are keeping these systems up and running and using these systems and using these systems to solve problems to make them uh, truly valuable. In today's presentation, we're going to be focusing on GIS mapping. So GIS mapping produces visualizations of geospatial information. Because viewing and analyzing data on maps impacts our understanding of the data itself, uh, we can definitely make better decisions using GIS. It helps us understand what is where. That's a really important concept. Um, the analysis becomes far easier by applying what, um, um, the where to the what. Um, answers to questions become much clearer for users. So if we look at how zoning or development regulations have been communicated traditionally within codes, uh, general code has a long history of that being in business over 57 years, We've had a long track record of traditional codes, um, but we along with many other people are starting to realize those traditional um, methods um, just, just aren't cutting it going forward. Um, so not only the code, but also procedural documents uh, like the table you see on the screen would be typical of how a code, a written code, whether it be online or in a book, would um, convey code information um, being, being in a table, you know, digits in a table, words in a table. Um, it, it's really difficult to connect that data with places that they regulate. Um, you know, in that, in that table you see, although the longitude and latitude coordinates are accurate and, you know, they're factually correct and they're accurate and they describe a geographic location, it's really hard to visualize the data in this table being attached to real places. Uh, the map, this, is, this, this strikes quite a contrast. Uh, when we take that data contained in the coordinates and apply them to a map, the places they represent become much clearer to the user of the data. That's because maps provide a context in which geographic information is made easier to understand for the user. When you have geographic context, you don't only see where they are in a map, you can also solve problems like you can calculate how far points are from each other. Um, you can check if points are clustered for patterns or trends. Um, you can also do things like find optimal routes between cities. You know, we do this on our cell phones all the time, um, you know, in GPS systems in our cars, um, you know, coming up with optimal routes. So we can, we can analyze data a lot faster in context when we apply data to maps. Um, since GIS can do so many things, there are a wide variety of benefits available to local governments who invest in GIS technology. Um, things like increasing efficiency, saving time. Um, a really important one is providing decision support. That's, the, that's one that really jumps off the page here for me. 
is that um, it, we, it really gives us great data and great context in which to make decisions. Um, and we're gonna see some of that decision-making later. Um, we definitely improve accuracy with the decisions we make and the plans we make. Um, it increases access to government. This is back to that user-centered uh, focus that we talk about and really keeping the people that need the information we provide, keeping them at the center of everything we do. It enhances public participation and promotes greater collaboration among public agencies. So because we're gonna be focusing on um, things like zoning code and planning, let's talk about GIS and planning. And I wanted to share a quote from Milton Ospina, who's with Esri um, as their urban and regional planning and economic development solutions manager. His quote is, no matter how large or small your community, as a planner, you deal with spatial information such as parcel zoning, land use addresses, transportation networks, and housing stock. You also monitor multiple urban and regional indicators, forecast future community needs, and plan accordingly to help improve the quality of life in your community. And I bolded that last part of the statement because that is our mission. Uh, the group of folks I talked about before, probably most of the folks who are on the line today um, attending the webinar, um, definitely as codifiers, as um, you know, officials, board members, um, members of municipal government serving the community. It really is about improving the quality of life. So before we go any further, I want to do a quick poll. We're going to start basically with the polls. We have three polls today. We're going to start basically and, and go a little more detailed as we go. The first poll is, are you currently using GIS in any way to communicate details about any part of your community's zoning, land use, or development process? And it's a simple yes or no. So the poll is open. Hopefully you can see the, yes, you can, because the answers are flying in. Okay. Very good. We've got roughly an 80-20 split, 80%. Uh, yep. Right at 80 I just dropped just a little bit. So 75-25, 75% are using GIS in some way to communicate details. Um, so that's that's a really good response. It, it's higher than I expected. So I learn something every time I do a poll. That's great. Okay, moving forward. GIS planning solutions in general. Um, making use of maps and GIS tools makes communicating zoning regulations and development procedures far more user-friendly, as like I've said before, and um, making it easier for people to understand GIS accomplishes this by connecting data with a sense of place. So GIS planning solutions being used for community-based design and planning, it's, uh, they're great tools, visual tools. Um, they work much better with community engagement and being able to connect with people in the community. And from what I've seen, they're far more likely to participate if they can make a connection to places they are familiar with close to home. Um, outstanding tools for economic development, smart growth um, in planning regionally. Um, when we look at you know, urban cores going out through suburbs, um, transects out to sub-rural and rural areas, um, transportation corridors, really great tools to look at um, much wider swaths of, of our communities and how they affect um, nearby communities. Um, so it's really about creating better communities for future generations. Um, and 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 even some you know not just what we consider to be the, the you know the good but also you know when we have made mistakes in the past brownfields blight development it really helps us redevelop and and renew areas that that need help. So solutions to focus on today. Um, I will be highlighting how a few specific solutions in the zoning and land use realm successfully leverage GIS to benefit communities. Um, these are community engagement and communication, smart city planning, economic development, permitting licensing and inspections, and interactive zoning maps. And before I launch into that, I want to do one more quick poll, a little more detail. Um, if you built a planning or development GIS tool, where would you turn for assistance with the necessary maps for your community? County level, and that's typically tax map or county level GIS departments, a private consultant, such as an engineering firm, 
um, or your municipal GIS office if you have those services in-house. And um, for those of you who are a little more distant but are just interested in GIS, I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer. The point of this question is to gauge where GIS expertise resides in different sized communities in different parts of the country. I really need your feedback because I have found in the years that um, we've been producing solutions using GIS, um, they really vary widely based on the size of the community, uh, whether they're urban, rural, um, what the economic situation is in those communities. So the results look like 50% of GIS assets are going to come from the county level or GIS department. Um, only 6% would be private consultant like an engineering firm. 31% um, my municipal GIS office in-house and 13% I don't know. Um, just a couple quick comments on those results. Um, 6%, um, that's interesting. I would guess if I looked at the size of the communities of the attendees here today, they're going to skew a little bit larger than many of the communities I've worked with on um, an interactive map GIS tool because I find the smaller the communities and the more rural the communities, uh, they tend to have to lean on private consultants a little more than the larger cities that have resources um, either in-house or um, they have good relationship at the county level. Um, and for anybody out there answering that I don't know, um, if you are interested in where to gain access uh, to GIS assets, such as maps for a project you're considering, um, although we don't, general code, we don't offer those services ourselves because we've worked with so many large number, with such a large number of different, um, different organizations on those. Um, you know, if you got a hold of us, I, my email will be at the end of this uh, webinar. Um, we are very likely to be able to help you find someone who you can help. So you can reach out to General Code um, after the webinar at any time. Feel, feel free to reach out. Um, we probably could help you work through that. Okay, so now we'll get into some specific solutions. Um, Esri's ArcGIS Story Map is an excellent platform for connecting stories happening within your community to geographic places. Um, location intelligence makes stories more relevant to readers. Um, if any of you did attend my last webinar, I did use this example, so please forgive the, uh, uh, the, the next couple minutes of repeated content, but I really like the site that um, Barbara Kelly and the team from Upper Chichester Township, Pennsylvania, um, came up with in working with um, PennDOT Connect Team to create the site. It provides a highly effective communication platform that connects events, project details, um, you know, reasons behind projects and vision to the community for specific, um, you know, regarding specific places via GPS. Um, it's a, the uh, story map is a, is a very user-friendly platform available to anyone with an ArcGIS account. So let's go ahead and take a look at the site. So what we see here in, our, in uh, ArcGIS's uh, story map is the, the, you can configure the pages differently. And the way Upper Chichester set it up, the left panel, the black area, is the actual story. So any content, any stories you want to tell, um, it, here's your, this is your place for a narrative. And on the right are either photographs or GIS maps that, that, that support the content in the narrative on the left. So as we see here, Upper Chichester is a, is a suburban area, very close to Philadelphia. Um, they basically are showing you know, the vision for um, the corridor that runs through their community and comparing it to Philadelphia. So it's a relate for people. They're, they're used to seeing that kind of thinking in the city that they wanna bring out to the suburb. So I thought that was really nice the way they did that using a local city that, that most people are used to. Um, now they're talking about their own corridor within their own city. So Chichester Avenue, um, we have an aerial photo on the left um, describing the corridor, and we have a map on the right using GIS to clearly communicate that this is the specific area that, that they're addressing in the story. Um, you get into more detail about the corridor, a little expanded view, so you're helping people see oh, the, the corridor here in our community is actually connected to a much larger corridor. So we may need to consider, um, you know, needs of this corridor, future planning for this corridor, 
that are greater than what we may be aware of in our specific township. Um, it, it allows you to do things like take, um, take data points regarding um, problems like crowded intersections. So they've identified crowded intersections on the map and put a place to it. So as they're talking about what they're going to do to fix these, these um, troublesome intersections, these are actual physical places that community members can take a look at and know exactly why and get to understand what the problems are. Um, they talk about reducing congestion. So again, you have those points on the map that people can relate to. Um, accidents. So we can do things like track the accidents, uh, major accidents, so that people understand there are compelling reasons behind making these changes that may hinder them in the near term, um, but really will help the community in the long term. So I think you get the picture here. Um, they do a great job tying it also to community engagement. Um, you have the ability to put videos in, YouTube videos. So it's a really great community engagement tool and a way to really explain to your community what's going on from a planning perspective. Um, I'm personally, I just started building one for uh, my own community as part of being on the planning board. Um, just because in social media, I see a lot of the challenges of people not really understanding the why behind certain projects uh, that are happening. So next is smart city planning. Um, smart city planning is a category of GIS applications that are available that support scenario planning and impact assessment. Sorry about that. Um, digitally. There, there are many different solutions out there for different sized communities with a wide variety of capabilities because these communities, um, there's a huge range in, in what they need based on their size and their challenges. Um, these types of software allow you to view current development projects on a map and reference key information about them in real time. So you can communicate on what's actually happening um, along with um, you know, what's coming in the future. So the example you see here is Esri's ArcGIS urban product. There are, there are many different solutions for this though. Um, scenario software like ArcGIS Urban also allows you to create digital models of the city and then collaborate on proposed changes, things that haven't been done yet. Um, proposed changes to land use and zoning regulations, and then that allows you to visualize what the impact of those zoning changes might be through 3D models. You know, for example, a planner might change the maximum building height, let's say, allowed in a certain area, and the model will actually reflect how that area's built environment might change over time. Um, evaluating the impact of the zoning and land use changes before you do anything physically in the built environment, um, it's, a, it's a great cost-effective way to test ideas without enduring real-world consequences, and it minimizes expensive time-consuming studies and uh, manual analysis. Lastly, this type of scenario planning software, it, it allows planners to clearly communicate proposals and increase buy-in um, from, from developers and constituents by providing easy to understand visualizations and metrics. So as proposals come out, proposed changes um, to zoning or changes to the development process, um, people are able to visualize, they can see exactly what it is that these changes will impact in the built environment. Um, you can collect uh, what you see here on the screen. Um, you can see areas where comments can be added, so comments can be made, um, so that public engagement, that feedback can come back in. Um, you know, this, this can be shared out to the public. It's a great tool for sharing your vision um, with the community. Um, and at a greatly reduced price, you know, compared to, you know, doing sketches every time, you know, fresh new sketches. Um, it's a really a great tool. So uh, the next category is economic development, um, or, or a lot of times it's referred to as um, site search because site search really is a huge part of economic development. Um, there's, there are many different GIS solutions available in this space um, that support economic development for communities. And, and again, uh, much like the scenario planning, but I'd say even more so, is there are so many, diff so many different kinds of solutions because there are so many different approaches to economic development. Um, you know, with 
because of the size of communities or their geography, um, population, um, you know, region, weather, jurisdiction type, uh, very different. So there are many different scales of economic development software from very, very complex, very, very detailed to rather basic. All economic development solutions will contain vital information about your community. So you're storing demographics, population densities, household income, et cetera. Um, property searches, like I started out with, um, property searches for developers and prospective business owners are usually a key part of economic development solutions using GIS. Um, that tends to be the major function of that, that common thread you'll see through all of them. Um, property searches are usually tied to the MLS offered by realtors or some other comparable listing database that is kept up to date by somebody. Um, so it's somebody else. Um, you know, a caution I would put out here for you is I've seen some communities that did this in-house and they didn't rely on that data being updated by someone else. And that's a way where you really can take on a huge burden really quick regarding um, keeping data up to date that you don't necessarily control um, within your own department or within your own community. Um, so, so look for solutions that tie into those, um, you know, well-respected, reliable data sources. Good solutions, are, um, they offer users the ability to filter on their needs and criteria for site selection, and they incorporate economic incentive information like locating properties within opportunity zones. Um, that's become really important for users. So you've seen a lot of solutions um, tying into those, you know, whether they be federal, state um, opportunity zones for economic development. Another key feature to look for in solutions that support economic development are um, is the ability to share what you find with others through email and social media. Um, that's really critical because usually when you're doing searches, you're working with other people, you're working with partners. Um, so you want to look for something that's going to make it easy to share um, your results with others. Um, some GIS-based economic development solutions can even combine detailed information gathered about consumer behaviors and attitudes through the mobile data that I was talking about before at the beginning of the webinar and social media um, that helps build better trade area info. Um, what you're seeing in the, in, the, um, in the illustration on the left here is um, instances of data collected regarding um, consumer behavior, so locations where where different events are happening, um, things like shopping or, or whatever. Um, it's amazing what's available out there. Um, another is um, property void analysis. Um, so, so you're also able through, through the MLS when you see um, properties that are available, um, computers uh, can quickly do analysis regarding those voids, um, you know, places uh, combining that with traffic patterns and other data to, to predict where the best areas would be in your community for locating particular businesses and that's that's what you're seeing here on the screen is is these areas um based on certain criteria regarding what kind of business you're looking to place can give you a map where you really can focus in on and, and quickly eliminate areas that might not be as good for the business and get you into those hot areas much faster having tools like these tailored to your community's needs can be a huge differentiator in attracting businesses to your community the next category is permitting, licensing, and inspection. And I'd say out of all these categories, I'd say this one is probably where most communities are furthest along in their sophistication. Um, most municipalities are in some stage of migrating away from strictly paper-based workflows um, involving building, land use management, uh, activities such as permitting, licensing, inspections, and code enforcement. Um, communities who have invested in GIS-based permitting, licensing, and ins inspection solutions enjoy significant benefits, um, such as saving time, money, resources, um, and again, um, keeping the users at the center. Uh, you know, I talked about before, we have a, an entire generation of adults who, um, you know, they grew up using their digital devices, and we can't expect them to go back in time and go back to paper workflows and physical vi uh, visits. And uh, this is where the pandemic has really um, been seismic in this change where, you know, we've been forced to not have the physical visits. And um, it's really forcing the hand here and has, has really 
provided an incentive to change behaviors um, regarding what, what kind of work we can do between citizens and government remotely. Um, this, these kind of systems bring an incredible efficiency to staff and constituents by streamlining um, their daily business regarding development and uh, making your community far more efficient and user-friendly. Um, this, the image I have on the screen now is the Municity Suite pictured. Um, it's, it's a municipal cloud-based platform. Uh, it is offered by General Code sibling company, ICC CDS, uh, with solutions designed for municipalities to stay connected internally and externally, and again, operate with greater efficiency. Um, these, these department packages are built to streamline inspections, permits, licensing, work orders, and assets. You know, we see on the screen here, um, again, we have the GIS, we have, you know, um, we have a parcel here identified, um, we're tied into, I'm not sure if this is Google Street View, but we do have, or, you know, photographs that are entered in by another means, um, we're able to look at, you know, we're providing context, we're providing a place. Um, so we have all of our parcel data, and um, we're able to see all kinds of things about this parcel in context to the, to the rest of the community. So software like Municity allows you to track and issue all permits, certificates. Uh, it allows staff to track all the activities on a permit, including permit type, status, construction costs, contractors, inspections, fees, um, tasks, and the history of all those activities, which is really important. Um, you know, on the screen we see here, here's a workflow. You know, we can see which stage of the workflow we're in as far as um, acquiring a permit, um, you know, a, a building permit here. Um, again, we've got the GIS, con GIS context in the background, but now we're layering things like um, procedures, process, where we are in the process, and details about the permitting process. Um, these are public portals. It allows contractors and homeowners to apply and track for the progress of their permits. Um, so again, great efficiency internally, but also great, e great efficiency externally. Um, you know, systems like this can track um, complaint activities. So code enforcement officers, um, you know, can track the complaints. Um, neighbors can see um, if the community chooses to display that publicly. Um, they can see, you know, where there have been complaints and what's being done about it. And again, that that feedback loop is really important to show your constituents that you are working on the things that are really important to them. And the bottom line is GIS mapping connects all of these workflows and documents by providing clear locations um, and that, that underlying context that we've talked about. So let's talk about interactive zoning maps. Um, this is MapLink offered by General Code. Um, it's powered by our partner Zoning Hub. It's an interactive zoning map that presents a community's essential elements of its zoning code in a targeted intuitive way along with providing guidance through the development procedure process. So a lot of what we talked about in municip Municity is also possible here, or an integration. We've integrated um, MapLink interactive zoning maps with Municity to provide a comprehensive solution. Um, some communities have added zoning maps to their municipal GIS, um, and, and you know um, they've added fields containing zoning district, let's say. You, know, you, you click on your community's GIS, and it might say you are in the R1 district um, to identify what zoning district a particular parcel lies in. This is a great first step in the right direction. Um, and I commend any community that's done that. It's a great acknowledgement that adding the accuracy and context um, that makes GIS maps, um, it adds a huge value to users. However, the solution still leaves a user to then go to the entire body of the municipal code. You know, maybe it's hyperlinked. You know, you click on the parcel. Um, it says you're in the R1 district. You click on R1, and it takes you over to the municipal code book. But now you're having to search or scroll through the entire code to find maybe a few just basic answers. Uh, the key difference with an interactive zoning map is that um, rather than simply linking GIS parcels to the municipal code in its entirety, this system actually boils down um, complex zoning codes into essential elements that are presented to users with just a few clicks. So with just a few clicks, you're returning, let's say 80% of the answers that, that people are looking for with zoning code. Um, that's, that's really user-centered design. 
So um, let's see it in action real quickly. This community is Crestwood, Missouri. And what you see in Crestwood, you can see, um, if I look at all my districts, the pink, the purple, the red, the browns, the yellows, you see that every zoning district is currently turned on. Um, but if I were to, let's say I was interested to coming to Crestwood and opening a restaurant, um, you know, traditionally you'd have to go to the code, you'd have to read through all the different district descriptions, you'd have to find out what the allowable uses are in each of the districts, and then go to a static zoning map and find where that, those, that allowed use for a restaurant is. But here in uh, MapLink, what we're able to do is we can go right to the use we're looking for, let's say full service restaurant, and with two clicks, I am able to narrow down which, um, with not only which districts allow uh, restaurants to be built in, but also right down to the parcel level. So I can go down and I can click on a parcel and I can find who the owner is, I can find the address, parcel number, and I can dig in and I can get more uh, very specific zoning um, information specifically about that parcel. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating, um, you know, a, a little virtual code site for that parcel, and we're pulling out all of the details about the parcel, like the district description. This is the district description that's coming straight out of the code. Um, we can look at all of the dimensional standards in one place. We don't have to go through large tables. We don't have to wade through a lot of content um, that we might not be interested in. We can go right to dimensional standards if that's the question we need answered. We can look at our allowable land uses. So if I go back into food and beverage sales, um, full service restaurant, now we're really digging in. And we're able, with just a few clicks, we're able to see the definition to make sure that we're not talking about you know, something else. Uh, not, it's not a bar, it's not a microbrewery, it, it, it's not a drive-through restaurant, um, uh, parking requirements, and, and also we're also learning things about the procedures. So in this case, this parcel, um, if I wanted to put a restaurant in, it is a conditional use. It's listed as a conditional use. So now we can actually drive through the details of the procedure to learn about conditional use. So again, rather than having to navigate through an entire code, I'm leading the user through in a very organized way with a few clicks. If I still need to know more about the conditional use permit procedure, I can continue to click until a deep link takes me right into the part of the code that addresses conditional uses. So again, keeping the user at the center, um, you know, we want to lead them to the information they need. We want to eliminate questions coming in to the office. Um, if we look at procedures up here, we can cover, you know, common procedures that people have questions about when they're in the development process. Um, what is a conditional use? What is non-conforming uses? Um, in this case, non-conforming uses. I can learn all about them, again, with um, deep links that take us right into the part of the code. So it's about saving time for the user. It's about eliminating those basic questions um, that really take up a lot of staff time in answering. So I briefly want to touch on the topic of APIs. Um, APIs are application programming interfaces. Um, all of the GIS-based solutions that we discussed today use zoning or land use code or parts of the zoning or land use code, along with other municipal code and, and documents to some degree. In the past, that data had to be searched out, handpicked, copied, pasted into a database, um, you know, entered into new systems as those systems came online and were built out. Um, not to mention with code changing all the time, uh, you know, through the amendment process, it has to be kept up to date by either you or someone else, um, or your municipality is exposed to legal liability for providing out-of-date code information. Um, so I just wanted to touch on API because, um, you know, if you have any municipal software that references or presents your zoning, land use, or municipal code of any kind, um, we want to let you know that general code now offers a, an API. Um, this allows us to dynamically share up-to-date municipal code data 
stored on eCode 360. If you're a general code customer, you use to eCode 360, our online code portal. It shares that code data with other solutions that you may be using. Um, this interface eliminates the need for costly and time-consuming manual data entry, that cut and paste process um, that somebody typically has to do when you build one of these new systems that requires um, code data to be entered into it to make it useful. Um, so again, just, just wanted to make you aware that you know, general code uh, does have an API and that we can help you with any of these systems that you may be building out. So to sum up, let's review why everyone should consider incorporating GIS in some form of their zoning, land use, and development processes. First of all, it's a user-centered technology. Maps are a highly intuitive way to help users understand and access information, especially with an entire generation of people using mobile technology. Secondly, it saves time and money by reducing or eliminating basic questions that often eat up large amounts of municipal staff time and resources. Thirdly, providing spatial content context to zoning and development regulations differentiates your community from others and makes you more constituent and business friendly. Um, projects are streamlined when people understand the regulations and procedures that apply to their properties and plans. Lastly, GIS can help you clarify your community's vision for its future and keep its citizens more closely engaged with that vision. Um, make them a part of it. Um, we need all of our citizens to be part of deciding what type of communities uh, we all want. Uh, help them to be involved by providing clear, up-to-date information in ways that are easy for them to access and understand. And I have the third poll ready to go. Um, I would like to know which of the following statements regarding your community and GIS is most accurate. My community already uses GIS extensively. We will soon be implementing more GIS tools and applications. My community wants GIS tools and applications, but likely won't proceed. Or finally, we won't clearly benefit from GIS in the near future. Okay, I love, I'm gonna wait. I love that nobody selected number four because that's always really sad to me. If um, you know there are there are GIS applications so simple, so small, so cost effective, I just don't believe um, that there is a community that couldn't benefit in some way from it. So I'm glad there were none. We have 36%. My community already uses GIS extensively. That's fantastic. 23%. Um, we will soon be implementing more. So that's great. Um, again, um, never stop improving. Um, you should always be looking for partners who can integrate. Just because you pick up a new one doesn't mean the old one has to go away. Usually, um, good partners will find ways to integrate. We've, do, we've done a ton of integration with existing GIS systems, for example, um, you know, connecting MapLink, uh, MapLink sites through an existing community's GIS. We've done a few of those and they've worked fantastically. And 41%, my community wants GIS uh, tools and apps, but, but likely won't. So um, I definitely would like to hear, um, you know, some of the why there. I, I understand budget probably jumps out right away, um, you know, but if I could help in any way, you know, I'd love to hear that story and help understand what the obstacles are. Um, and tell you in my, my work with my community, I know that you know there are grants available. Um, there are certainly ways to um, you know make what may seem unaffordable affordable. If you find the right partners, if you find a way um, maybe to get a hold of some grants. So um, if anybody feels like they have any obstacles, they they'd like to bounce off me or anybody else at General Code, we would definitely be open to um, having a conversation and helping you out. So now I would like to open up the floor for Q&A session. So Jeannie, Kayla, um, if you could help me field some of these questions coming in. Okay, Wayne, what sources for grants would you recommend or can you provide? Um, there, um, the, most of the ones that I've seen have been at the state level. So it's difficult to have, um, to throw it out there. Um, 
every state is different. You know, we really saw this happen with the CARES Act. So for I'll just use this as an example. The CARES Act last year, um, there was such a huge difference in how different states and different municipalities made um, allocation of funds available to communities. Um, some states, you know, they, they very specifically handed it out. Um, other states, it was more of a first come, first serve. We saw some states cleaned out um, almost immediately. And then we saw other states that took a much more, um, you know, a much more careful approach to it. Um, something I'd like to point out right now that we're, we just actually spoke about this today in a, in a company meeting. Um, the, the, new, um, the new bill that was just passed for COVID relief contains a lot of local level, um, local level support, local level funding. And just like the CARES Act, um, anything you do to cut down on these trips to the, you know, into the office, paper-based workflows, um, you have to look at these, um, these uh, coronavirus aid packages. Um, you have to take a look at that, work with your finance person. Typically, we say the finance person in your community is that conduit, um, probably better than us. But if you ask them about it, these aid packages were specifically written to facilitate um, working at a distance and not, you know, breaking some of those necessities of coming into the office to look at things like maps, put those maps out there, um, you know, to support digital work and remote work. Awesome. Anne is wondering if you have an idea, like across the nation, what percentage do you think of communities are currently utilizing some form of GIS? The big, that, that big question as far as using GIS, um, I really hesitate to throw a number. Um, <laughs> using GIS in, okay, I'll put it to you this way. In all of the map link builds I've done, I to, just to throw it out there, um, we're in many different states with it. I would say I've been able to find GIS assets used by communities who have, you know, um, you know, looked at putting putting this kind of site together i'm gonna say like 70 percent, 75 percent the catch is is it specifically related to today's topic which is zoning land use development that's where the percentage gets much smaller and that's why i say i see a fair number of sites where if you go to a general gis um, let's say for a county, county level GIS, like we saw in our poll results, county level GIS is very popular, um, especially in more rural areas. So you'll see a community appear on GIS and you'll see things like perhaps flood zones because flood zones are maintained um, federally. You'll see information like flood zones or highways, highway construction projects. But when you get into zoning and land use, that's where the percentage really drops because that's hyper local. You know, that's where I, I don't see things all the time like zoning district maps, overlay districts. Um, that's where it tends to fall off. So you have confusion because somebody may, you may have um, a common one I see is you'll have a zoning district in GIS. Somebody will go to the zoning district, say, I'm in the B1 district, go to the code, read about B1. The catch or the problem is they're actually also in an overlay district. They might be in a downtown corridor. They might be in a historic district. That's an overlay that wasn't in that GIS system. So now we've actually caused confusion rather than help. She's got a bit of a follow-up question here as well. Um, she's wondering, isn't there a study with data by some national planning organization? A study by data by some national planning organization. I, so national planning organization, I'd say APA. Um, I speak at, I spoke at four different state APA conferences last year. I attended eight. Um, APA is a fantastic uh, resource for information. Um, GIS is, I would say, it's just starting to become a really common topic there. It's it's growing. 
Um, I would say last year, I've been going to the APA conferences for about five years now. And last year I saw a significant uptick in GIS related content um, regarding sessions in the state conferences. So APA, um, the American Planning Association, I would definitely check out um, American Planning Association's website. Um, some of the contents behind a firewall if you're not a member. Um, I would love to connect with you, email. Um, I, I could probably find some other resources. I'd like to understand a little deeper um, what the question is. So I, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, if I can just, you know, if we exchange emails, um, my email will be up on screen in a minute. Yep, she's very thankful for that. Yep. So far, no other questions. Okay. Okay, so I am, you know, good question. I'm going to uh, leave you with uh, some GIS resources. Um, so here are some links. Uh, some of the photos you saw today, for example, um, some of the content came from gisgeography.com. Esri is a fantastic website. Esri has, you know, um, all kinds of GIS resources. Um, anybody in the GIS space knows what a powerhouse Esri is. Um, we a general code um you know links to map link um also municity um so some of those products that we uh showed you today um are listed there um so i i, I hope you find those helpful again um let's exchange emails let's have a dialogue if there's something else you'd like a reference on um i'll switch over here there's my email on screen. Um, so again, anybody here today, if you have any questions, follow up, would like to have a conversation, um, any other references, I would be happy to work on those with you. Um, I've really, I really become a huge fan of GIS and think we can solve a lot of our problems in um, land use zoning, planning. Um, a lot of our problems can be solved with GIS tools. So if there are no more questions, I'd like to thank everyone for spending their valuable time with us today.